Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to talk about attachments in Microsoft Access, the attachment data type, how to use them, why you shouldn't use them, the best alternatives to attachments, and how to remove them, how to get them out of your database if you put them in there before when you didn't know better or you inherited a database from somebody else and you want to fix it. Today's question comes from Reed in Scottsdale, Arizona, one of my silver members. Reed says, I have some files and pictures like resumes and employee photos that I want to save with my data in Access. I heard you say it's not a good idea to use attachments for this, but I'm not really sure why. Can you explain? Yeah, you probably heard me trash talk attachments in previous videos. I just don't like them because a Microsoft Access database is really not the best container for other files. It's a great container for your data, but not storing binary objects like images and Word documents and all that kind of stuff. That stuff's best left stored in your file system, and you can just store references to them, like the, the path and file name, in your database. We'll talk about this in a little bit. But essentially, your nice, clean, pretty, small, efficient access database will get terribly bloated and huge and slow if you start stuffing all kinds of files in it. Access really wasn't designed for that. So they added the attachment data type relatively recently. I think I, I'm going to guess about 2007, maybe 2010. And since then, you have had the ability to stuff files into your access database. But I strongly recommend against it. All right, Microsoft added that feature for it to be easy for beginners to add files to their database, but just because something's easy, that doesn't mean it's good practice. It's kind of like sending images through email, right? It's not the most efficient method because your email program has to take that image and convert it into a big long string of text and send that whole giant thing as an email, right? As opposed to a different like direct file transfer type where you can just send someone images, maybe through Google Drive or whatever. So now by stuffing all these files inside your Access database, which by the way has a two gigabyte limit, right? An Access database can only be two gig gigabytes in size. So if you start stuffing hundreds of these pictures and documents and stuff in there, your database can grow to that max size pretty quickly, right? And all those files have overhead too. So here I've got a database without attachments, which is only, you know, one point something megabytes and a database with, I stuffed all these attachments here into that database. You can see the database file grew and it's larger than the size of all these other files put together because there's some overhead too with each file. It's got to store additional information. So attachments, access, it's bad. It's kind of like when Arnold says, yes, but they were all bad, right? When, when in True Lies, when, when she asked him if he ever killed anybody, right? Yes, but they were all bad. <laughs> Love that movie. Now, while I wouldn't use attachments in a regular production database that like runs your company, if you want to make a small hobbyist database or like a supplemental database and stuff some pictures in there, maybe you want to put together a simple single file, you know, that's got some employee photos as attachment. Okay, fine. I'm going to show you how to use them, but just keep in mind that this is not a good long-term strategy for a proper database. Okay. I get it, a lot of you just use Access for fun and it's not something you're running your business off of and you wanna make a little database to store some pictures, okay, sure, it's not bad for that. So I'm gonna open up this database without attachments here. This is just a copy of my Tech Help free template which you can get off my website if you want to. You'll see there's nothing in here, I didn't put the attachments in this one. Okay, so I'll go to my customer table, design view, and I'm gonna add down here a field called attachments. An attachment data field can hold multiple attachment files inside of it. That's why I called it attachments. It's like uh, any kind of mints, right? Uh, manage mints or accomplish mints, right? I got a little tin of mints one year for Christmas and said manage mints or something. Like Anyways, find the attachment data type. There's not too much to set down here. Save it, close it, open up the customer form. And just for the purposes of class and to save space, I'm going to delete all that stuff. Let's go to form design and go to add existing fields and you'll see attachments down here. Now it opens up into this block of other stuff. Don't worry about this other stuff. I'll talk about this other stuff in the extended cut when we talk about programmatically removing all these attachments from the database. 
But just grab the attachments. You can close that if it's open. Grab this guy, drop it right about there. Okay, here's your attachment field. I'm going to move the label on top and move the field down below it like that. See, grab that upper left corner and it moves them independently. And make this big because you can see a preview. If you put images in here, you'll see the first image that's in there. Right? Uh, let's do a little formatting, format painting here. Where's the format painter? There we are. All right, paint that so it's nice and pretty. You got attachments. All right, that's all that you got to do. You add a field to the table. You add the field to the form, the control to the form. Save it. Close it. Close it. Open it. All right, we got this big block here. How do you put stuff in it? Double click so you have the hover. Double click to add attachments. See, right? Come back in. There you go. Okay. You can also right click and you'll see manage attachments. Same thing. All right. So attachments, double click to open. If you have a list of them, we don't have any. Let's hit add. Little browser window pops up. Pick the files you want to put in there. I'll just stick with some small one like the Picard Riker, Mia Spock, Mia Terminator. I'll put a couple different ones in there. All right. Hit OK. Oh, hit OK. <laughs> Can't talk today. Hit OK again. And there you go. There's your attachments. You'll see the first one as a preview. Okay, open it up. You can click on this. You can open this. You'll see me as the Terminator. I was having a little fun, right? Uh, me as Spock, open. I've been playing with AI a lot lately with <laughs> different things, all right? Uh, and so on, okay? Um, you can save these. You can save all of them if you want to take these and extract them later. You want to remove one, you just hit remove. That's that simple. Hit OK, and now that's stored in your customer table. You'll notice also, if I close now, you'll see my database has grown from 1.1 megabytes to now 3.8, because it's got all those files inside of it, right? If I open it back up again, and I come in here, and I remove the attachments and hit OK, close it, close it, all right, let me hit F5 to refresh. That's still got a bloated database. Okay, so don't forget, after you remove attachments, you got to do what? Compact and repair. That'll compact your database, get rid of all that empty space, and you'll see it's back down to almost where it was before. There's a little tiny bit of overhead. It's a little bit bigger because I added that attachment field. So that's, that reserves a little more space in there. There's a little bit more overhead. That's not much, though. Want to learn more about compact and repair? Go watch this video. It's something you should be doing regularly to your access databases. Now, what should you be doing if you care about proper database development? Well, if you just want to work with images, go watch this video. I show you how to properly store references to your images in your database. You can still display them in your forms. You can display them in your reports, but you're only storing the path and file name to the image in your database. So you don't bloat it with the actual image itself. Okay, watch this video. In fact, I've got an entire access imaging seminar where I teach you all the different ways to work with access images, including creating a folder on your server where you can pick images from anywhere, like on your desktop, and it'll your database will copy them up to the server and store a link. Right, all kinds of cool stuff in this seminar. I'll put a link to this down below. As far as other file types go, Right, Excel spreadsheets, PDF files, Word documents, you can store references to those too. Store the path and file name to the, to the file in your database and using the follow hyperlink command, you can still click and it'll open up that file. That's how you're supposed to do it. All right, if you wanna keep like references to Word documents and stuff, go watch this video. In fact, in my ABCD database part five, I build an entire image and document management center. So for each customer, you can have all kinds of other documents and images attached, but they're not attachments. They're stored the same way that I just talked about, where you store the reference, and then you can view the file that way, okay? Now, let's say you got a database and you got hundreds of attachments already in it. Either you did this before you knew any better, or you inherited a database from somebody else, or you've got, you know, you're a consultant and you've got clients with this problem. You want to extract all of those attachments but extract them smartly, right? You want to extract each one. Let's say they're stored in the customer records. You want to extract them so you know who, you know, what customer they belong to. Well, in the extended cut, I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to teach you how to use VBA to extract the attachments to a folder. And then we'll also be able to tag what record they belong to and all that stuff. So that'll be in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. And gold members can download these databases that I build in the tech help 
series and you get the code vault and everybody gets some free training and just just come on get on board join and lots of free stuff for you i also want to take a second to give a shout out to brian coleman brian tried to reach me by subspace but his radio wasn't transmitting uh he just wanted to let me know that he searched for a microsoft access attachment data type on google and didn't find one of my videos so thank you brian for pointing this out i've had this on my list to do a video for for a long time now in fact uh this original vi uh, question from Reed is probably two years old, but uh, I just haven't bothered because attachments aren't something that I use and I really don't think a lot of people out there use them, so I wasn't gonna bother doing a video. But since you did a search and you didn't find me, I'm making a video on it, so this is my goal. If you search for anything Microsoft Access related, anybody, anytime, and one of my videos doesn't show up, at least in the top three results, I wanna know about it, so drop me a line. And uh, thank you, Brian. Apply. But there you have it. That's attachments. They're easy to use. They are beginner friendly, but they're not the best solution if you care about long term database performance, reliability, management, that kind of stuff. But now you know what they are, how to use them, how to remove them, and what your better alternatives are. And members, I'm going to teach you how to remove them with some VBA so you can get rid of all of them in one shot in the extended cut. Okay? But that's going to do it. That's your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that Show More link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.